What is wrong with me? I mean, why did I wait until now to see this movie? I waited till I was invited. My dumbass wasn't even planning on seeing it. Respect! So Respect is a biopic film about the life and times of legendary soul singer Aretha Franklin. You know the name, at least. She is known throughout the world as the Queen of Soul. Probably safe to say one of the most famous singers of her time. So it was inevitable that this biopic would eventually come along. And who better to play her in a movie than Jennifer Hudson? My god, she was like perfect casting. So this movie is the story of her life from when she was a kid, living with her father, played by Forrest Whitaker, he's a reverend, and then, you know, growing up throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s, becoming a very successful singer, and the ups and downs that went with that. Also touching on Aretha's hardships. Yeah, all the obstacles that were getting in her way, mostly men. And so, yeah, now here we go with our biopic movie, which, yeah. Again, I can't believe, well, it's been almost like a month, right, since this movie came out in theaters? Boy, am I glad I saw it. All right, Jennifer Hudson is every bit as good as you would think Jennifer Hudson as Aretha Franklin would be in a movie. She's perfect, she's a great actress, and when she's singing, it's just a whole nother level. I have always actually thought, like, ever since I saw Dreamgirls in 2006, when Jennifer Hudson really exploded onto the scene, I was like, okay, she's gonna be around for a long time because her voice is just spectacular. In my opinion, she actually has one of the best voices of this generation. It's like her and Ariana Grande. They're like the two where I'm like, if they're gonna be singing something, it's gonna be great. Guaranteed. So yeah, needless to say, Jennifer Hudson crushed it in this movie. When she is performing, when she is singing on that stage, you can't look away. You know, that's when she gets her soul out. She's bearing her soul to the audience, and you just listen to that awesome voice of hers, and you're just in love. You're in awe. Then there's Forrest Whitaker as her father, and okay. Aretha Franklin, according to this movie anyway, had to overcome a lot of obstacles in her life, like I said, and her father was one of them. Because he was really controlling, you know? He would speak for her when she was being asked questions. He would decide what she would do in her life, you know, the choices she would make, what songs she would sing. It was really bad. He had a presence. He was scary. And you hate him too. Like, there's a point in this movie where you just want him to burn in the fires of hell. Because he is so controlling over Aretha Franklin, he doesn't let her make any decisions for herself. And this movie does a really good job at driving home how much that sucks. And after she eventually does get away from him, she ends up marrying this man named Ted White, played in this movie by Marlon Wayans, who at first you're like, alright, this guy's pretty cool. He has a bit of an edge about him. He eventually becomes her manager. And you're like, all right, they work pretty well together. Their chemistry is pretty good. But eventually you start seeing those hints in him that you're like, oh, this is not going to end well. Yeah, he starts becoming pretty controlling as well. And you're like, oh no, this guy, oh my God. Aretha, you got to get out of this. Because the situation actually ended up being pretty similar to her and her father. When she was being interviewed, he would be the one who answered the questions. She didn't get to speak for herself. And once again, you find yourself wanting this character to burn in the fires of hell. Yeah, you want to shoot him in the face because he's a dick. Which means, yeah, I got to give all sorts of props to Forrest Whitaker and Marlon Wayans in this movie. They were really good. When an actor's performance can get you to hate their character so much that that you want them to burn in the fires of hell, that's when you know that that is a performance that stands out. But then you see the other side of that is that Jennifer Hudson as Aretha Franklin, she has to overcome these obstacles. You know, we know Aretha Franklin for being the singer that demanded respect. And she got it the world over. She wouldn't settle for anything less. But this movie tells you the story of how she came to achieve that status. The obstacles she had to overcome. And when she stands up to these guys, you're just like, yeah, Aretha, get yours. You've earned it. You deserve it. And you love seeing it. But then it gets to a point where she starts acting kind of dickish. Like she has earned her respect, she is now a world famous superstar, and it gets to the point where, you remember the scene in Bohemian Rhapsody where Freddie Mercury was like, Queen is what I say it is! Yeah, it kind of gets to that point with Aretha. I would say spoiler alert, but one, it's historic fact, and two, it's in the trailer. And three, this movie's been out for about a month now, so I think it might be okay to have some minor spoilers in this review. But yeah, Aretha gets to that boiling point, and you're like, you're being a dick, stop it. This isn't the Aretha that I grew to love. She develops a drinking problem, and that's the part of the movie where you're like, uh, I don't like watching this. I mean, it's necessary for a movie like this. You know, like Rocket Man, Elton John dealt with the same kind of thing. And like Elton John, Aretha Franklin came out the other side. And I felt like that part of the movie where she starts acting like a dick and drinking, I felt like it was kind of breezed over. Like, I didn't feel like the movie dealt with that problem for too long. Which is surprising because this is a two and a half hour long movie. But I felt like the movie spent maybe a little too much time on her build up, you know, her early life as a kid and her rise in her career than it did with her bad phase, you know, with her drinking and her being a dick. So if I do 
have any gripes about the movie, I guess that would be it. But really, that's a really slight nitpick because it was still acted very well and it was shot very well. The music, the score was really good. Well, all right, might as well talk about the music now. The score done by Chris Bowers, it is pretty good. For a movie that is, you know, more about its soundtrack, which I'll get to in a minute, than the score, I felt that the score actually did stand out in the scenes where you heard score. I was like, yeah, this is some good background music. It matches the tone very well. It worked. But then, of course, yeah, we have the soundtrack, all the Aretha Franklin music sung by the amazing Jennifer Hudson. Yeah, it's as amazing as you would expect it to be. j Hud was born to sing Aretha Franklin. They're fantastic covers. I might just get this soundtrack. I don't know if I will, but... I wouldn't turn it down. I mean, she's got some great songs, you know, not just respect, but you know, Ain't No Way, You Better Thing from Blues Brothers. That's how I know it, because I love that movie. You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, you know, award-winning songs. So imagine all those Aretha Franklin classics sung by the beauty that is Jennifer Hudson's voice, and well, Jennifer Hudson in general, and you got yourself some music worth listening to. Guys, in the end, respect is fantastic. Again, I can't believe I waited this long to see it. The acting was great, the music is great. You just grow to love Aretha Franklin by the end, because we see her overcome all these hardships and the movie does a really good job at making you feel it. Forrest Whitaker and Marlon Wayans are also great in the movie because you want them to burn in the fires of hell at certain points. I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna wanna watch this movie again right away because it's a pretty heavy drama. The movie does have rewatch value, but you know, it's all about the kind of movie you like to watch in your free time. Me, I like watching fun movies, you know, Baby Driver and such. I don't see myself, you know, sitting down and casually watching Respect anytime soon. Doesn't mean this movie's not great though. For Respect, I will say, go see this movie right now. I am also really surprised that this movie is rated PG-13. Because there were some points in this movie where I was like, that is a really bad word. Like, a really racist word. That's rated our language. Or at least that's my opinion. God, what are the kids seeing these days? So respect, have you seen it? What do you think about it? And just for kicks, what is your favorite Aretha Franklin song? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.